Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel, and welcome to another episode of Learning Free CAD for Beginners, where we teach the fundamentals of Free CAD whilst we learn workflows with practical examples. Today we're going to be looking at compound objects, the reason why they exist, how to use them, and get an understanding of how to manipulate your scenes and your models with them. So I hope you enjoy this series, I hope you enjoy the channel, and let's have a look at these workflows. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So what are compound objects? If you used the part workbench, you would have seen the tools in the toolbar just here, make compound and explode compound, which are also available from the part, compound, and in this sub menu here. A compound object is just that. It's an object made up of a number of different other objects. So I've just added the cube, the cylinder, and the sphere to the screen and I can take those and create a compound object out of them, make compound. This differs from a fusion because if we look at these two faces, there's no edge between them. This is because they're still, if I roll over the compound and zoom out a bit, they are still three separate objects. If I click the compound and use the fusion or the union, then we get that edge between the two. So you can see that edge there, and also you can see an edge in between here and on the other side. So if I hover over this now, you can see that they are fused together. And if we look internally, the internal faces have been removed. So you can see that there. I'm just gonna hit Control Z and hover over that again and you can see the internal faces are still there. So that's the difference between a compound object and a fusion. A compound object is just a collection of objects but why are they there and how can we use them? Compound objects aren't just in the primitive objects, they're not just a collection of extrudes or primitive objects, they can be created from a sketch as well. And this is where things get interesting. So I'll create a sketch in here and say a new sketch along the XY plane. And I create two objects in here of closed geometry. And let's create another one. So we've got three objects in here, two slots and a square. If I take that sketch over in the part workbench and extrude it, then that will be a compound object. So if I extrude this and hit OK, I can extrude that as one. This is extrude because the individual geometry, if I go to part compound and explode compound, then inside here, these are exploded them out into individual extrudes. Not only that, if I take those and delete them, and delete the extrude and bring back the sketch by pressing the spacebar, I can explode the sketch as well. So this sketch, if I cut to part, compound, and explode compound, I get the individual geometry in here. This makes sketching an assembly from something like a blueprint quite quick. So for instance, let's take all of these and delete them and create a new sketch. along the XY plane. Now I'm going to create a rotate. But this time I'm going to use open geometry. We can use closed geometry if we want. And I'm going to create the basis of a container. So something like this. Hit escape. So I've got that in there. Let's place it's a vertical constraint on that. And let's say let's place a horizontal constraint on that. So we've got this geometry here. 
Now, if I wanted to save some time, what I can do is add a lid to this. So I can create another sketch of open geometry in here, like so. I'm not going to constrain it. I'm just going to leave this as it is. If I hit close, we've got this sketch in here, which can be, as we saw, clicked on, and in the part workbench, we can come up to part, compound, slow compound, and we get two individual sketches of open geometry. But let's take another step. Let's delete that and bring back the sketch. And this time click on the sketch and use the 2D offset. So create a 2D offset here. Let's change this to skin and bring up the offset so we can see the offset in there, what's happening in there. Let's fill that offset and hit OK. So we've got this offset in here. If I take that 2D shape and use the revolve, and I want to revolve it along the Y axis, so we're rotating the offset along the Y axis, if I hit OK, we created a container if we hover over that container, you can see that it has a wall in there. If I click that revolve, come up to part, come down to the compound, and explode the compound, we'll end up with two individual parts that we can separate off. So right click transform and move this up. We can see we've got that in there. And you see the sketch and how that's created that revolve. Let's OK that. It's also worth remembering that parts of FreeCAD will create compound objects as well. Let's create a new document and I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to come over to the Curves Workbench. This is an add-on we've got to add from Tools and Add-on Manager. But with this sphere, I can create something called an ISO Curves. Click that, we get the ISO curves added to this. And the ISO curves, I can change the number of U and V to what I want. So I've increased the ISO curves. This is a separate object. So I'll get this object here, which I can take and come over to the part workbench and explode it using the compound and explode compound. If we look at the exploded ISO curves, we have the individual ISO curves within. So you can see them all here, and we have the circles that run up as well. What that means, I can use those in revolves or sweeps to create certain types of geometry. Let's come over to the sketcher and create something to revolve this around. Don't want it attached, hit OK. I'm going to go along the X, Y plane and I'm going to place a line around about here and this is going to be my rotation line. So I'm going to rotate these partly around this rotation line. Let's come over to the part workbench and select what I want to rotate. So I'm going to rotate a number of the circles, like so. Hit the revolve, and I'm going to select the reference as this line. And I'm just going to rotate these around about 20 degrees. So I've rotated those around 20 degrees. And you can see we've got the ISO curves there, which I'm going to hide. And we've got this object here. And we can remove some of these revolves, see which one we want. Or we can take them and fusion them together. Another use for compound objects are for slicing tools. So let's say we had something in here. Let's take a sphere. 
and I want to slice this into four. We can do that by coming out to the part and create a primitive. And I'm going to create a plane and use this as a slicing tool. Now I'm going to set this to about 20 in length and 20 in width. I'm going to hit create three times. This creates three planes and close that. I can then position these planes using the transform into position and set them at intervals. We can use the placement for this if we wanted to. So I'm just going to transform them into position. And the final one. And now they're in position, I can take each of the planes by control selecting them, create a compound out of them. So we've got the sphere and the compound. If I select the sphere, control select the compound, cut to part, split, and slice apart, I slice the sphere into four. So a look at the exploded slices we're coming to here. You can see we have four slices. And we can hide these, we can combine them together, and we can do what we like with them. Let's do this the other way. Hit Control Z, so I've got the sphere back and the compound. And this time I'm going to select the compound as the one I want to keep, and control select the sphere. Part, split, and slice apart. We've now got the sphere as individual slices as per that compound. And also we've got the inner slice and the outer slice. So we've got a choice of what we want to use. So if we look at the part design, we can't have multi-body objects in there. A compound is a multi-body object. The part design will automatically fuse and cut depending on the feature that's being used. So if we had a pad in there, it will fuse. If we have a revolve in there, it will also do a fuse. But if we have something like a pocket or subtractive loft, then it's doing a cut in there. It's that individual phase of the automatic cut, fusion or intersection that will break down that workflow. The part workbench is capable of doing those workflows. Part Workbench is also capable of creating and modifying non-manifold objects. So I hope that's helped with explaining what compound objects is, how we can make them, and how we can use them. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypalme forward slash Darren B. E. Stone, or at Coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.